Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraven, you here for another legacy video. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and we'll take a look at them after round one. Um, so I'm recording this on October 10th. We got uh, we got no no ban list changes to legacy, but uh, in the article they, they talked about how good Leyline Binding was uh, going to be for the format, and um, how that would stop Delver. So uh, obviously we're going to play a Leyline Binding deck today, right? And uh, just like beat Delver. That's how, that's how this format works, right? Beat Delver with the six mana card. Let's do it. Okay, so we are playing a deck list from Ustinius today, uh, which has a very cute name, Minsk and Zoo, um, and I'm absolutely here for it. Minsk and Boo Timeless Heroes has become a legacy staple very, very quickly. It's got card draw, it's got removal, it's got a recurring creature. There is a lot to like about this card, and it hits like a truck. So we're going to try pairing that with some aggressive creatures that get bigger depending on how many different land types you control. And we are going to do this with a five color mana base that takes advantage of some of these triomes. And the goal here is to be able to have these cards that get bigger very quickly and just kill our opponent dead. Some of these, for example, are, are kind of nuts. In the Magic Christmas Land world, like you can play a 2-2, two, two, sorry, for two mana, you can play a 4-4 four, four flyer on turn two. That's almost that Murktag regent, right? And all you have to do is play five different colors in your mana base and have all your fetching work out perfectly. Healthy format, though. Um, anyway. Cards like Neshoba Brawler, which has power equal to the number of basic land types among lands you control, and Territorial Kavu are going to go and be very large and give you some additional value. We're going to try to Shardless Agent into these cards as well, and who doesn't like shooting your opponent in the face for five with Tribal Flames? Um, as far as the sideboard goes, the sideboard that was sent to me was kind of in rough shape. I don't know if I made it better. Um, I kind of picked some specific things that I want to deal with. The original sideboard had red blasts and alpine moons, and I've opted for pithing needles and a couple of extra path to exile instead. Uh, my rationale is stuff has to get out of the way. Oh wait, hold on, shit, where it? No, 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 I'm going to stand by it. I'm going to stand by my gut and keep Path to Exile over Source to Plowshares. Like, at the end of the day, we're, we're an aggro deck. I don't want to give a Merit Lodge deck 20 life. Let's, let's path them. Um, and I've got Pithing Needle for Wasteland and Urza's Saga. Um, I don't know if the Blasts are better, and I don't even know if Path to Exile is playable. Um, it's really awkward to run things like Prismatic Ending with Shardless Agent, and, like, the same is true for Red Elemental Blast as well. Um, I'm okay with playing a couple of prismatic endings, because, like, I can literally eat anything up to, you know, CMC5 with this card, given the mana base of this deck list. Um, I think this is gonna be one of those times where we have to jump in and just see how good this deck list is. Um, I have played against something that looked kind of like this once, and it was pretty powerful. Um, I'm worried about Wasteland. Um, we'll kinda see how it goes. Uh, anyway, folks, I hope you'll enjoy this. If you do, click the like button. If you don't, click the like button anyway. It helps out a lot and uh, makes up for the play points that I'm about to lose playing this. And if you're new here and you like what you see today, please consider subscribing. Let's battle. All right, um, I will be keeping my opening hand here. I've got a Wild Nakatl on turn one, which can attack for three damage on turn two. It is Merfolk. Sure, absolutely. This can get, like, everything, right? Sure. If I control five types on turn two, this is just a one-mana removal spell for that Aether Vial, which would be pretty cool. Um, does Savannah pair with... Do I have a grixis -y thing? Not grixis -y? grixis -y. Okay. So I can place Savannah into fetch Grixis land next turn to Leyline Binding that Aether Vial. All right, opponent did not die of shock from someone casting Wild Nicotl in the year of Karanos 2022. So that's good. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, so the Grixis land will be uh, tapped. 
So unfortunately, a daze could do me in. Uh, but I think I've got to try it. All right. Let's go get the lounge. Enters the battlefield tapped. I, I think I'll just go ahead and do this free combat. Like, I know this has flash. But I just want to know. Oh, a spell pierce instead. Sure. That was not a card that I was expecting. That's just, like, not a super particularly playable legacy card right now. Hmm, okay. Alright, so there's a second land drop. So my opponent can, in theory, play two lords. And it will be pretty good. My shardless agents are also pretty respectable. I think I'm more interested in double spelling this turn. Um, so let's go ahead and crash in with the Wild Nicotle. You can play a Lord. Oh, it's a Harbinger of the Tides. Sure, that's fine. Okay. I just want to double Wild Nicotle, play two three threes. Regardless Agent cascading into something that gets rid of the Aether Vial would be kind of cool. I can also just put eight power into play. That's probably not the worst. Green... Red? Green blue for Shardless Agent specifically, maybe. In case this gets wastelanded. Alright, let's play the Brawler. I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to get Taiga for like Wild Nicotle reasons. I'm just going to assume that I am going to be fetching wrong while playing this deck because I'm spending half of my brain power talking through my lines rather than thinking about every possible decision tree and like every permutation of all my land based stuff. Alright, yeah, there's the Hex Catcher. I have Tribal Flames that can be a removal spell for that. I don't know. I'm kind of interested in just, like, trying to slap in combat, though. Dismember? Okay, yeah, Dismember's fine. That just screams to me, like, I have a Lord. I'm not going to block there. You got away with the attack, you got away with the attack. Is this instant or sorcery? It is non-creature spell. I think I'm going to go ahead and get in there with Wild Nicotle. Get my opponent down to 10. I just play Shardless Agent. I kind of just want to get in 5 points of damage on my next attack and then try to kill my opponent with Tribal Flames. A little hard with a Hex Catcher in play. I think I want to do something that adds more power to my board. Prismatic Ending. Use that to uh, attempt to take out Aether Vial. Not necessarily uh, what I wanted. I basically wanted every other card other than Prismatic Ending. This is, in theory, still 5 points of damage next turn, but if my opponent feels like they're in danger, they just hold back. Because, like, there's only 2 Prismatic Endings, and then the remaining, you know, 11-ish cards all deal some amount of damage. Force of Will. Pitching a Force of Will. Um, that's fine. Okay, so opponent has a lord. Oh, sure, it's a merfolk trickster. That's fine. Uh, I don't know, I think if you have the merfolk trickster, you're supposed to tap this down and avoid the three points of damage, right? Because my opponent's dead next turn in a lot of worlds. Like, I think my opponent's dead if they bricked. Um, maybe... Or maybe not literally dead. Go ahead and crash in with everything here. On it goes to four. And I think I'm going to go ahead and... Oh no, Tribal Flames is not an instant. I thought Tribal Flames was an instant. I guess it makes sense that it's not. Alright. I thought I could do this better than I actually could. So this probably removes three power from the board. Okay. So... I will go ahead and pay for that. And now my opponent can sacrifice a second creature in order to not die here. Okay, yeah, and they have sacrificed the catcher itself. Yeah, so that Tribal Flames was a removal spell on two of their permanents, um, which I feel pretty good about. I also feel pretty good about just, like, playing Teferi and bouncing my opponent's blocker or their Aether Vial on my turn. Yeah, Lord of Atlantis is totally fine. Alright, so I can play Teferi into Wild Nicotle. 
That's probably okay. Just cascading with Shardless Agent is also pretty good, because I hit Tribal Flames some portion of the time. I can also just attack and then do some shit post-combat. Not give my opponent the information ahead of time. But I think I'm interested in just doing this now. Okay, that's good enough to get the concession here. Alright, what am I working with? I'll probably play more Tribal Flames. I'll probably play Path to Exile. Endurance is playable. I think Needles and like Force of Vigors do stuff versus Aether Vial, but I don't know that I'm actually excited about them. I think I'm not super interested in Minsk and Boo on the draw here. My opponent has so many creatures. I think like the Planeswalker makes a 3-3 three, three a good portion of the time and then kind of fizzles out. So I think I'm just going to kind of attempt to play this as a zoo game rather than a Minsk and Boo game. Yuck. Auto Mulligan. Also, let's not talk about how good Wasteland is against my deck. I, I don't think I'm supposed to board in the Pithing Needle here, but it's possible I'm wrong. Red, white, blue, green. I don't have black to make this super, super cheap. Um, I don't know that it's worth mulliganing further here. I'm really not excited about this hand. I'm going to go ahead and keep it because I kind of have two removal spells in the form of Tribal Flames and Teferi. All right, cool. No Aether Vial to start things off. Avu. Avu's my turn to play most of the time. Um, so I think I'll go ahead and pass the turn. I need to reread this card. It right, attacks. Discard one if you do draw or exile a card from a graveyard. Okay. I attempted to play around Wasteland on turn one, by the way. Thorgil Adept, revealing Merfolk Trickster. Absolutely. Uh, in case you don't know this one, it uh, taps target creature and opponent controls. Uh, this is fine for a little bit later. Um, so I am fine going with Territorial Kavu here. 3-3 three, three right now. It'll be a 4-4 four, four next turn. And next turn I've got a handful of options available to me. I don't really want to use removal spells except on Lords when possible. Getting... Uh, Plateau Wasteland would be pretty disastrous right now, given that it takes me off of two different cards. Okay, there's another island. What are we thinking so much about? Just passing. I don't know how to play this turn. I'm always playing Tropical Island. I think I'm just going to go to combat and see if my opponent lets me attack with this creature. Oh, that's wrong, actually, isn't it? Because I'm not a 4-4. Four -four. I have an ability that turns me into a 4-4. Four -four. So if I lose my ability, I'm actually a 1-1. One -one. Yeah, that's really awkward. Alright. Um, in that case, I'm just going to chill and play an Endurance on my opponent's turn, I think. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Oh, I'm not a 1-1 one -one base creature? Did this display as a 1-1 one -one in my hand? Oh, this displayed as a 1-1 one -one in my hand on turn 1 because of... Uh, forest I played. I thought it was a 1-1 one, one base that got larger. Okay. Uh, one thing I dislike about Magic Online is sometimes the cards don't appear the way that the cards actually are. So for example, this Territorial Kavu is displaying as a 4-4, four, four, even though it's like not really a 4-4 four, four while it's there. All right. There's my 3-4. Yeah, I guess Territorial Kavu is super awkward in this matchup then, huh? <clears throat> Fine with sending the Wasteland back into the deck. I don't really think my opponent is going to shuffle or use their graveyard, though, so it's kind of a moot point there. Yeah, I've been cut off both of my removal spells here, which is super unfortunate. How much do you cost right now? Eight. All... All right, um, we're going to stare at each other for a little while. I'm very much not favored here. Um, it seems like my opponent has a bunch of reactive cards. Um, so if we're just chilling, this is totally fine. Well, Nicotle's not the best, but it's a creature. And I don't think I'm going to pivot to trying to be the aggro deck here. Like, my Wild Nicotle is a 1-1. One, one. I'm not backing things up very well here. I need a Plateau to turn it into a 3-3. Three, three. Alright, opponent either has a bunch of counter spells or they have the world's worst flood going on over there. Okay, 
there's a plateau. That is quite nice. My plateau has been wastelanded. Are you both red and white? You are not both red and white. I get red or white. Wow, that's awkward. That's really awkward. I guess it's Savannah then. And I think I'm just gonna... I think I'm just gonna pass a turn. I may be being too cautious here. I've got... I've, I've just got bad vibes. Like, I want to have the superior board presence and then cast a Teferi to shut down all the instant speed nonsense, but I'm trying to play Teferi around days. Because it's just super likely that my opponent has that. Alright, end of turn, Endurance. Let's do at least that much. I apparently should have put my plateau back in my deck. Didn't expect that to be relevant. I can only cast one spell this turn unless I luck into a land. There's, there's just like no way this Teferi resolves. Uh, this is the only way that I can attempt to multi-spell. Uh, yeah, there's the Pierce. Am I battling? Maybe at this point I'm battling. I don't think with this one, though. Let's crash on in there. I kicked Harbinger of the Tides, sure. It's just going to return an Endurance to my hand. That's annoying, but not the end of the world. Like, at the end of the day, it's still a one-for-one -one trade. I don't think it matters which one of these I take out. Um, but if that's as bad as it gets, not actually worried. I, I think my hand, my opponent legitimately just flooded out. I'm behind on board now, so if they just, like, rip a lord off the top, it is awkward for me. Five mana? Oh, yeah, okay, they don't have more merfolk. Or at least they didn't prior to that draw. Yeah, okay, my opponent flooded out. I, I could have been getting it. Oh, wow. All right, un, un, understood. Get Get in there. Okay. Um, Arid Mesa is cool. Now I can actually do some multi-spelling. So I have green, white, blue. I need red, black, which I can easily get. The Grixis Lounge covers that. So now I have a 2-mana 4-4 flyer, and I could also cast a 1-mana Path to Exile, um, which I think I'm into. Let's get in there with Wild Nacatl. Alright. I'm just going to go ahead and take that. That's fine. I guess I cast Path to Exile now. I don't know. I'd, I'd much rather cast it on a Lord. It, like, if I cast it now, I play around a Spell Pierce, but I would, I would so much rather cast this Path to Exile on a more threatening card. This is going to give my creatures some extra text, by the way. So my green ones are going to get Tramble. My red ones are going to get First Strike. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and call that a turn there. And we'll have two Aether Vials tick it up. I also wouldn't mind casting Path to Exile on the Mutavolt. Sure, this is fine. Ooh, a Lord of Atlantis. This is a very large um, blowout in combat in my favor. Because my opponent thinks their creatures have Island Walk right now. And they are very much about to not have Island Walk unless my opponent's last card is a counter spell. Um, so if this resolves, uh, this is very much a two for one in my favor. Okay, I mean, it is what it is, right? One one unknown card. It was somewhat li somewhat likely that it would be something like that. All right. So I need to get Lord of Atlantis out of the way. So that my creatures can block again. And then unfortunately I probably just have to chill. Play out another body. Given how much I just took, I don't think I can attack right now. Alright, we're going to see Vials on 2 and 3. Alright, seems like I've weathered the storm for this turn. Ooh. 5, 9, 10, 11, 12. Plus 5, 17. This theoretically lethal damage, I don't think I go for it this turn. I think I cast a Tribal Flames and attempt to go for the kill next turn. Oh, it's so awkward that this is a sorcery. Yeah, if I had a second red here, I would absolutely go for it. I think it's just safer to wait. 
Okay. Opponent did not have a sneaky creature there. Uh, we need to dodge an island walk lord for one turn here. Okay. That's annoying if it hits the lounge. Otherwise, I don't care about it. Okay, it did hit the lounge. So now, it's still a mountain? What is the wording of this? Okay. Uh, why, why is mountain still displaying as normal? Like, how much does this cost? Okay. So it thinks I have three, which is accurate, but mountain is just still there. Wild, okay. I guess I'm just casting Endurance in combat. And then hoping to draw a red land for Tribal Flames. I assume both of these Aether Vials are just going to stay in the same place at this point. I guess I can just always yield to this trigger for that reason. I think I win this game if I put the Plateau back in my deck so that I can fetch it earlier. It's like this would be the Plateau. Right. Opponent not being willing to make the first move here. Which feels correct to me. I'll go ahead and cast an Endurance. Um, I would be happy drawing most of those cards if I were to shuffle another Endurance. I have 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 damage incoming. So blocks have to happen, but I think I just keep playing instant speed Endurances until I run out of Endurances to cast. Um, I think this board incredibly favors my opponent, though. Yeah, sure, that's fine. Uh, yeah, I think my opponent could have gone for lethal last turn if they have that. Hmm, no, it's probably correct to wait another turn. Alright, there's a Mutavolt activation, so we're going. And I will attempt to cast an Endurance. Cool, that happened. Nuke your graveyard. Why not? Um, this is not lethal as of right now. Oh, I will... Oh, shoot, it's Master. Master is one of the ones that gives Island Walk JK. It is, so I can block that one, and then I die to the remainder. Yeah, all right. I processed Lord. I didn't process Island Walk. All right, GG's. Yeah, if you have that last turn, you just do win. I don't know why they waited then. Okay, so Mana Base definitely fragile. I don't think I want Pithing Needle here. I don't know, maybe I do want it when I'm on the play. There's also an argument for Minsk and Boo on the play. It's just kind of hard to get to four lands. Like, I've got 21 lands with no actual mana ramp spells. I don't know that I want that versus, like, my opponent's Spell Pierce deck. I might just run back the same plan. I don't feel super great about Teferi. Like, Teferi is just walking into Spell Pierce pretty bad. Maybe I play Pithing Needles. It's just really awkward if I open up on a Pissing Needle on turn one. I have to, like, make that choice on the play. Alright. We'll have a lot of colors. We'll have four colors on turn two. I can Prismatic Ending and Aether Vial my opponent has. I have a follow-up removal spell for their first Merfolk. I don't have stable mana. I can't cast this card as of right now. I don't know if this should be a mulligan. I think I'm going to make that one a mulligan. I think hands with more lands are just better here. Uh, I think I'm going to keep this one junking Endurance, probably. This is a hand that can play a turn to Scion of Draco. I have, what, a Grixis? Yeah, so I can do Grixis land plus Savannah. Grixis land plus Savannah. I have a turn to 4 4 flyer and follow up with some of this stuff a little bit later. Yeah, that's fine. Fetch my Grixis land. Prismatic ending I had previously would be nice against that, but can't have it all. All right, Grixis land into Savannah. Um, I guess technically the Brawler has more power right now. Brawler is easier to cast if I get Wastelanded. But this thing attacks with Trample next turn if I do just play Scion of Draco next turn. So I think I'm okay with that. We'll see, though. Another Aether Vial. Well, Pithing Needle would look real good if my opponent's going to keep hands that look like this. Okay, there's no way for me to double spell right now. Um, I guess I'm just going to play another Brawler. I don't really need Trample right now. 
Uh, crash in for five. Sonic goes to 15. Play another one of these. Call it a turn. You cost two. You cost two. We'll just be good with that. And then if I play Scion of Draco, I'm insulated against something like a true name nemesis that otherwise might stop a lot of my damage. Okay, that's fine. Feels like a silver gill with this timing. Yeah. That's a okay with me. Um, Lord of Atlantis is good, but I don't really know that it's enough here. I'll go ahead and fetch. What colors are my other Triland? Not red, notably. Like better Savannah for me here. I think I'm okay with that. Alright, do I want to Tribal Flames the Lord? Or do I just want to give my things Trample? The Tribal Flames going to Dome is just so nice a little bit later. I mean, so it's just crashing in for 10 this turn, though. So I think I'm just good with attempting this at Sorcery Speed. It played around Curse Catcher and Daze and Spell Pierce. Oh, these things also just innately have Trample. I mean, attempt 10. I don't know that the 10 is going to happen. Like a 1-1 one, one can get Viled in here. Uh, but it didn't happen. A future Tribal Flames is now lethal. So is one of these two Brawlers connecting. Um, but this is a scary turn, because like there are multiple Aether Vials online now. Like My opponent can deploy a lot of cards here, and as you can see, they've left both Vials at 2. Um, meaning I could do, have to deal with like Lord plus Trickster or something like that. I think honestly the biggest thing I have to worry about is just Wasteland. Alright, I mean, go to combat. Alright, there is a Merfolk Trickster. Now with the Brawlers, it's only their power that's equal to number of basic land types, not their power and toughness. So that's a thing. Um, I'll send in with this one. I assume my opponent will like put in a Lord and block this in some capacity or bounce it to my hand or whatever. Uh, yeah, it is a Lord. I really needed my fourth land this game so that I could double spell. Ooh, that is, uh, that is going to allow me to trample some damage over. I think I'm good with that. Okay. Do you have another Lord? Do you have another Merfolk Trickster? You have another Lord. Um, that's fine, actually. So I trample over for one point of damage, meaning that Scion of Draco connecting in the air for four with flying next turn um, is just lethal. The opponent needs a Force of Will right here, or another Merfolk Trickster. Alright, it has resolved. Notably at this point with the Hexcatcher in play, a Tribal Flames isn't exactly the top deck that I'm looking for. One Vial has gone up to three to play towards more outs. Okay. 5, 9, 10, 11, 12. 15 with one more Lord. Okay, that's fine. That Wasteland doesn't do anything. Cyan of Draco is still lethal in the air here. I've F6'd for clock-based reasons here. Yeah, that's not lethal damage. Close. But with the Vial on three, um, I think I've... Probably got it here. Um, does the Sylvain fly? And is that CMC3? That's about the only card that I can think of um, that beats me off the top of my head. These are 5-5s. Five you fly. Show me your card that beats this. Okay, sure. Your name, Nemesis. Alright, we have gotten the GG. Which is good, because I don't want to lose my dignity by losing to Merfolk. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com. Moxfield is a deck building website for Magic the Gathering with a ton of functionality. Um, and today I want to show you the tags. So a lot of times when you look at a deck list for say a commander deck list, you have some very large categories, but you might have some personal ways that you go and view these categories, like combo pieces, fast mana, humans, interaction, and you can actually sort these deck lists in a lot of ways. So consider checking out Moxfield if this appeals to you. All right, um, I'll be keeping this hand. Um, I guess my opponent's going first, so I get to decide whether or not I need to be able to Leyline Binding immediately. I think I'm into just playing the Tapped Triome on turn one most of the time, though. 
So do I have a volcanic island in this deck list? I do. Cool. Alright. So, playing against Dredge, I've got an Endurance in a Game 1 scenario. That's very good. So I think I'm into Apt Triome turn 1. Um, I maybe can't play Kabu on turn 2. Sure. So, Otherworldly Gaze puts three cards... Well, it looks at three, puts three into their graveyard, the rest back on top in a random order. Um, I think I'm okay with them casting that again, right? Like, there's no Drudger in there yet. And if they eat up their mana another turn doing some nonsense, I think I'm okay with that. It can be a little awkward if they, like, randomly cast a creature and Cabal Therapy me or something, but... While also, like, spiking Endurance as the name. But, like, I don't have very many copies of Endurance, and I certainly don't have manipulation to find them. So I kind of get to clear the graveyard once. Another otherworldly gaze. I would also really like to just cast this Territorial Kavu. Uh, it's also graveyard hate, so I'm trying not to cast this Endurance until I draw a different green card that I can pitch, because I would just love to pitch a Shardless Agent. Okay, no, no Dredgers in Yard. That probably puts Dredgers in Yard. Hope it doesn't. I think we'd Imp and Golgari Thug. That is a grief. See which way my opponent stacks the triggers. Alright. Um... I need to junk the graveyard here, unfortunately. Uh, which means I am losing the vast majority of this hand. My opponent um, stacked the triggers properly in the way that leaves the uh, reef in graveyard, which, like, potentially mat matters for um, Icarid later. Leyline Binding not particularly strong here. I'll probably just cast a Tribal Flames on my turn if I am given the option to do so. Which I don't think I should be. I think my opponent is just supposed to take Tribal Flames. Alright, so this is Volcanic Island, and then I have Domain. I can Leyline Binding at instant speed to get a Narc Amoeba or whatever. Yikes. Okay. It's bad if this is a Dredger, obviously. Actually, I guess I can get the other Triumph out of my deck if I don't have to immediately, uh... Ooh, no Dredger. That's worse than a Dredger, though. Oh, those aren't particularly strong cards. Uh, there's an Otherworldly Gaze in there. That's it. This is just better than Volcanic Island in this exact spot for me. Alright, let's draw a relevant card here. Uh, I mean... Kind of relevant. White... Blue, some other color. I guess it's better to cast Leyline Binding on the Icarid, though. If my opponent returns it. Okay, Otherworldly Gaze is acceptable. Gemstone Mine is now gone, notably. So, Cephalid Coliseum activation is off the table. Alright, my opponent has gotten a Narc Amoeba. Wait, hold... Do those go to the bottom of their graveyard? What is the wording on this? Yeah, I guess you you pick the portion of the graveyard they go to. Wild. Uh, opponent has said no to Icarid. Alright, no dredge there. Um, do I just leyline binding this and then just play Minsk and Boo? I think so. My mana's a little taxed here. Alright, so let's grab some land. At this point, it doesn't really matter very much. Um Yes, I have multiple green, I have multiple red, I don't have multiple blue, I can get Volcanic Island. I don't have multiple white, I can get Savannah. Yeah, actually, I guess that means Plateau. Alright, so there's Minsk and Boo. I'm going to go ahead and get the Death Machine rolling here. I don't really mind if I take a, a hit on Minsk and Boo from the Icarid this turn. Um, notably, Minsk and Boo can also get rid of Bridge from Below's, if that's, like, a thing that I need to do. Um, which apparently it is. The Cabal Therapy is rough. Oh, wait, no, my opponent doesn't know about the Teferi. Um, they can take it, though. Careful Study, quite strong. 
All right. So opponent gets a Narc Amoeba. Gonna attack my Planeswalker for three, and then Cabal Therapy twice. I end up with a decent number of zombies. Yeah, that's fine. All right, they've named Tribal Flames, which I think is a good name. They can sacrifice the Narc Amoeba to get two more. This takes the Teferi. Got kind of a weird decision to make on my turn with, like, whether or not I just create a new hamster. I can create a new hamster, kill two bridge from belows, or I can just make a 7-7 seven, seven attack with it, and that potentially forces the bridges out anyway. I haven't played enough games with this deck to know what the correct decision here is. I don't think I'm going to make the new hamster. Top decking the land isn't what I'm looking for here. I'm going to go ahead and plus one Icarid. One Icarid. My opponent blocks with everything. They're left with a 2-2. I lose Minsk and Boo. I don't know that I super win from that board. I also don't really know that I win holding back, though. I think I hold back. Really needed a live draw there, though. In the world where my Boo is still alive, I can just chuck Boo, draw seven cards, and go from there. Um, but I'm not super expecting this all to go well. I like the post sideboard games a lot better, where I have 4x Leyline and 4x Endurance. I thought I was going to be able to turbo kill with Minsk sooner, but I was incorrect. See where my opponent sends all this damage. Oh, it's everything at me. Nothing at Boo. Gives me a lot of looks at Tribal Flames. 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 after a shot, uh, fetch. Fine to just block an Icarid. I don't think I need to kill a zombie. Like, I, I'm, I'm dead next turn or I'm not. There, there is no, no world in which I survive another attack step from my opponent. That's just physically impossible. My opponent is getting six more zombies. Just 12 more power. Wait, hold on. Why did I lose Minsk and Minsk and Boo? I looked at chat. Medea Magica is being attacked by Icarid, Icarid, Zombie Token, Zombie Token, Zombie Token, Zombie Token. No attacks made on Minsk and Boo. What on earth? Icarid, Icarid. One, two, three, four zombie tokens. Bug? That gets a screenshot. That's really frustrating. Alright. I don't know that I have a way to win now. Alright. Playline binding. Awesome. Alright. Concede. Like, that was the smart attack anyway, but... Like... The magic online client is objectively wrong. Oh, that's really frustrating. Alright, Endurance in, Ley Lines in, probably Path to Exile in. Not really interested in Prismatic um, Ending. I don't think I'm super interested in Teferi. Stops Pitch Cast, Force of Vigor, specifically. But that would have happened before Teferi comes down most of the time. Teferi doesn't kill my opponent. Um, I'm not super interested in Leyline Binding. It's at the Exile with extra steps. Um, I'll play like four of this effect total, I think, and be good with it. I don't think I want more. It's possible some of the worst creatures in this deck are worse than some of these other... are worse than Leyline Binding or maybe Pithing Needle. I could also play one more Tribal Flames just to close out the game sooner, because I definitely wanted it there. Um, what would I do if I did that? Eh. This is probably fine. I don't know, on, like, Tribal Flames versus Leyline Binding, though. Um, this is an aggressive hand that I would normally keep. Uh, it's not good enough here. Um, I guess with any land, this is pretty good. And with any green card, this is pretty good. Very, very, very reluctant keep. Um, so I'll keep this. Pitching. Uh, I, I have a lot of uncastable cards right now. Maybe a Scion. Maybe the Tribal Flames. 
there's a lot of worlds where my opponent doesn't expect Leyline of the Void after seeing game one Endurance, and then I just kind of get my opponent and get a free win here. Like so. Yep. Oh, cool. Opponent doesn't know how bad my hand was. So now opponent has to respect both Endurance and Leyline of the Void. Maybe on the draw, like, my Wild Nicodles are less impressive. They just do less damage. Although I have, like, a bit of a glut at CMC2 here. I could see on the draw playing a couple more Leyline Binding to have more instant speed removal for Icarids and, like, the random Hogak or something that slips through. Um, I am going to keep this hand. It's awkward, because, like, now my opponent knows that, like, I might have Leyline, but they also know that I might have Endurance, so... There's tension. I also don't like the lands that I have. Like, it's kind of hard for me to make the Scion of Draco cost two mana on turn two, as of right now. I have to, like, get a fetch land in order to do that. All right, it is a Chain of Vapor. Okay, I did get a fetch land. Um, so I'll go ahead and play that. There's an Otherworldly Gaze. My opponent is incredibly favored right now, by the way, in case that isn't just very obvious. I kept pretty close to a one-card hand for the matchup. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but not by too much. Okay. They've kept a bunch of their stuff here. Alright, careful studies. Quite good. I don't think I have two black sources in the deck. I would have to double check. Alright, there's a Grave Troll in Graveyard now. Go ahead and fetch. Or no, I do. I have two Triomes, so I can, in theory, cast this. I can pair this with Volcanic Island this turn. Alright. Cool. Uh, Territorial Kabu is better than Scion here. Red. Green. There's some small amount of Graveyard Hate. It's not really enough. But it might buy me some time. Uh, so, opponent can Cabal Therapy me, get a zombie. I'm more worried about Cephalid Coliseum royally fucking me up. Okay, um, careful study could be bad, because life gets hard with multiple bridge from belows. Oh, yeah, okay. So, three bridges. Multiple therapies. Alright, yeah. Game's game's over. So, with three bridges, two Cabal therapies, that's six creatures alone. Oh no, sorry, there's a fourth bridge. So that's eight zombies plus Hogak into play. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna waste my time. I, I can't beat that from there. GG's. Um that was unfortunate. Alright, um I think I'm comfortable keeping my hand here. I'm going to play some good, honest magic with uh, Wild Nicodle. I'm really going to need a third land drop with this hand. I suspect the deck doesn't have enough lands. I think I've already said that. Um, let's go Taiga Nicodle Pass, and uh, next turn we can get something that produces white and either play Territorial Kabu or Wild Nicodle, depending on what exactly I'm feeling and what my draw step offers up. Marsh Flats. Could be some sort of dead guy ale type thing. Could be reanimator. Could be stone blade if it's like 2014. All right, what are we doing? Thought sees me. Better. Oh, I'm less excited now. What's that? Endurance with the steel chair. Uh, I'll pitch wild nakatl here so I can play out territorial kavu. All right, goodbye graveyard. I'll sacrifice my Endurance, and Animate Dead now has no legal target. <laughs> Opponent says, I suck, lol. Oh, no. Yeah. That, that unmasked should have come first. We would be looking at a very different game here. Opponent says, really? First Mono Black Children? Now Domain Zoo and Legacy, huh? Yeah. Why not? The people love it. At least you better love it. I played against Merfolk for 45 minutes. For you all. As a show of love. 
All right. Um, Leyline in Path in. Path is way better against Grizzlebrand than, like, say, Swords of Plowshares. Um, Hithing Needle's not crazy, but is probably not good. I am not interested in Prismatic Ending. I'll go Shardless Agent here. Shardless Agent's not exactly awesome here. I think I'm going to board that out since I have so many cards that I want to board in. I'm just, like, fine hard casting this stuff on turn two. I don't really mind just casting a Tribal Flames for five early on in the match. I think I'll go down, like, one Scion of Draco, or maybe it's supposed to be a Minsk and Boo. I, I don't really know. Like, Minsk and, Blue and Boo clocks hard. I mean, I'm gonna keep it. Do you bring in Serenity versus Zoo? All right. Opponent can still, like, reanimate my Territorial Kabu and uh, try to win that way. Okay, they fetched white. They might have... Oh, oh shit! Oh shit, they had an answer. They expected Leyline. <laughs> well, that, that, that's just rude. Honestly. Absolutely just rude. Uh... Arid Mesa pass, and I've got Endurance, or nonsense. Okay, looks like my opponent is chilling, which probably means, like, end of turn in Tomb. So I can get you into Savannah. Seems fine. Heath, Crack, Savannah, Ye old Territorial Kabu. The Graveyard Hate. The People's Champ. Alright, there's the Entomb. Fetching Crystalbrand. Hon honestly, I feel bad for my opponent. Like, top decking that Endurance is absolutely filthy. Yeah, you unmasked me. But I had it all. Junk my opponent's graveyard. You may take my Leyline Binding. Would you like to reanimate my Endurance? Do not. This is a card from a graveyard. I think I'd rather loot away the land, though. I'll discard wooded foothills. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. There's my opponent to 14. 9 plus 5 is 14. I'll play this this turn and then have lethal next turn. My opponent technically could, like, entomb reanimate again, right? Like, it's not crazy that something like that could happen. And then in some of those worlds, I don't actually kill. Okay, they did not have it. So now it has to be Dark Ritual-based nonsense. Alright. Opponent doesn't think they are dead. Which is fair. Little do they know. Um, I'll crash in with both of these. I will do the whole discard draw thing. Or the Nakadal. All right, my opponent has conceded here. Um, GG's. Okay, I have a reasonable opening hand here. Again, though, I don't really have enough mana, um, which has kind of been a constant thing. Good Phil, big fan, first time playing you. You're in a video? Good luck. Yes, don't waste on me. All right, let's see what nonsense my opponent has. Tropical Island, maybe playing against a Bant control deck. Could be playing against something like Aluren. I hope my opponent's playing combo. I say that not based on the texture of the hand, but because it's about 10 p.m. at night, and I want to record two rounds. So combo would be great. Oh, cat's meowing at me, hold on. Okay, um, I didn't draw a land... I will play a Wild Nicotle here and pass the turn. All right. Again, getting some slightly control-ish vibes. I kind of want to play the Kavu to loot, which means that I want to fetch an untapped red source anyway, so that can be like Volcanic Island. Do that fetching now. And this gives me four types towards Domain. All right, opponent took the damage. Green, red for Territorial Kavu. No plays in two turns here. 
We might, we, we might be playing against blue-green show and tell. The control deck probably would have interacted against these creatures already. I might just be attacking a wild Nicotle into an endurance, which would suck. But, you know, here we are. Opponent says, of course, I have a lousy hand in this match. Uh, I will be looting here. I think I'm too glutted on twos to keep all of those. Can't double spell this turn. Alright. Opponent's at 10. I'm just going to play another Territorial Kavu. And uh, we'll see what happens. Am I going to die? That's rug stuff. I don't know what my opponent's playing. I, I, I don't know how to sideboard here. Like... I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Like, am I supposed to board for, like, rug Uro stuff? Am I Is it Adnaws? Maybe it's Adnaws. Uh, it's Adnaws, I like Tribal Flames. I'm not really great at Fighting Storm. Like, my plan is just kill them. I don't really like Leyline Binding. Endurance is okay. Tribal Flames deals damage. Um... Then, like, Horse of Vigors and Pithing Needles have niche text. Like, assuming I'm correct and that is what they're on, I could also play some Ley Lines. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna board like this. I'll mulligan. Uh... No? Feels like no. Oh, oh, oh. Um... On five, I probably just keep... To make sure that I have reasonable looking mana. Get rid of lands. Like this is not an impressive hand. Alright. It it does kind of feel like my opponent is storm. In which case I've gotta hope that like just attacking for five on turn three with some amount of other backup is good enough. Um this hand is much noticeably worse than my previous hand. Maybe I should have put a pile of, like, uh, Deafening Silence in the sideboard or something. Alright, so... I can do Grixis Land into Savannah to get everything again. That'll do. Fetch. Savannah into Brawler. I've got a 5-3 I've got in play. Um, it does feel like my opponent is Ant. Again, my plan versus a lot of combo decks that aren't graveyard focused is hit them. Hit them in the face very hard. If I do specifically know that it's Ant, not like a lot changes, like Leyline's medium, Force of Vigor is medium, Ithing Needle, Unpolluted Delta is a thing that I'm allowed to do, and I've been there before. Okay, it's an Abrupt Decay. My opponent straight up a fair deck? Or is that, or is like, am I right and this is a storm deck? And my opponent's starts have just been extremely slow. It doesn't really make sense that I would have, yeah. Uh, this is fine. Leyline currently wouldn't have done anything. Still wouldn't have done anything. Here? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, is my opponent a dedicated peer deck? If they're a dedicated peer deck, then these aggro elements are really strong. If my opponent's sequencing is lazy, I might be able to, like, take a, an LED with Leyline Binding and have it be really good. Okay, yeah. This is a lot of mana. Uh-huh. Yes. I'm gonna fetch a uh, second LED. Okay. Kind of ruins the whole Leyline Binding plan. I guess I'll take one out here. The difference between 17 and 18 is... Nothing. So I'll take out an LED. But I imagine that my opponent very easily kills me from here. Okay, yeah, there there is a tendrils. I can go ahead and concede. I'm not gonna make my opponent click through that. Okay, so I know that they are here into the abyss based now. Again, all this stuff is kind of medium. I just need to straight up kill my opponent. Don't have more threats that I can board in. Fairy's not exactly awesome. Teferi doesn't contribute to killing my opponent. 
Leyline Binding or Leyline of the Void is probably better. I'm not really excited by Leylines or Force of Vigor, though. Kind of a thing. I think I'll play the Leylines for Cabal Ritual. Drop one Leyline Binding. Um, got a Wild Nacatl. It has a Scion. And basically any land and play Scion turn three. I don't know that this hand's aggressive enough. Like, the Wild Nacatl on turn one as a 3-3 attacker is good, but I don't have a turn two follow-up play. I think I'm going to try to fish for better. Yeah, this hand is nuts. Um, keep this. Pitch the Lounge, I think. Start with a Leyline in play. I can do Taiga... No, I can do Savannah into Volcanic Island. Yeah, Savannah into Volcanic Island gets four of them. All right, Savannah, Wild Nacatl. And then any land drop means that this attacks for five instead of four. All right. Cool, yeah. Totally happy with that. Um, I will go ahead and preemptively just uh, grab Volcanic Island. We'll get in my three points of damage. Drop my opponent to 17. Play Brawler. Uh, my opponent will be at four life as of next turn, right? Attack for eight, and then five is 13 total damage. All right, no end of turn play, although my opponent did pause, so I kind of think they might have something like a Brainstorm. All right, they've got an Abrupt Decay. I mean, that's fine. Territorial Kavu. I play that or do I just tribal flames my opponent? The immediate life total damage matters for um like past in flame or not past in flames, um ad nauseous if my opponent plays that. Um but I think I just want to go for seven damage and then tribal flames my opponent. The tribal flames is also better if they have to like peer and pass the turn. Although I guess if they peer and pass the turn they're probably just dead, right? Yeah, they would just be dead. I need to fetch a black land. Probably doesn't matter too much what that land is. All right. I have very minimal disruption here. Ooh, my opponent does have Wish Claws. I could have played Pithing Needle. All right, let's fetch. I draw a Leyline Binding. I can already play Leyline Binding and Tribal Flames. I don't think my choice matters very much here. Uh, actually, green green for endurance uh, matters in some world, I guess. Not really. Yeah, there's endurance. All right. Back for eight. I think I am fine discarding endurance. All right, that's fine. Eight damage. Puts opponent to five. Rival flames for Xaxes. And we are indeed 3-1 now, which is a much better record than I was expecting. All right, um, final round here. Opening hand uh, doesn't really have enough mana to function. I'm going to go ahead and just mulligan this one. The opening hand's really slow. I don't know that it's worth going to 6 to try to fix that, um, but I kind of have to hope that my opponent is playing a slow deck if I keep this. I recognize their name. I don't remember what sort of things they play. Oh yeah, they're kind of a Staxi player, I think. Um, I, I recognize their name, I think, because I played some of their lists. Um, I think I'm going to keep this um, Pitch Plateau and get the green Ryland thingy this turn, pair it with Volcanic Island next turn, and then if I draw one of my relevant two drops, I can deploy it. All right, Mox Diamond pitching Dark Depths. Oh, no. Oh, it's just a Serum Powder. That, like, totally could have been worse. A little worse. Um, so I don't know if my opponent is... How do you get this trial? I don't know if my opponent is... There's with Volcanic Island. Do I... Do I Leyline Binding Expedition Map? I think I do. I don't know if my opponent's deck actually requires colored mana or if Mox Diamond is just a colorless accelerant. I think I'm just going to take out the map. 
Like, the map can be Urza Saga, which is kind of a big deal right now. And, like, it also could be Wasteland, which is not great for me either. Alice for one is A-OK. -okay. I do not have very many one-drops in this deck, although there's a good chance that I can Cascade into one um, with Shardless Agent. I'd like to find a green source here, maybe Taiga, so I still have red if I get Wastelanded. Yeah, maybe Taiga. And let's let's try to high roll here. Like, there's worlds where this hits Wild Nakoddle, and it's, like, awkward. There's There's that world. There's that world. But in the worlds where we hit a Territorial Kavu or a other card, like, my upside is just so much higher. All right. There's a Karn. And in this timeline, I'm punished for not having a 5-5 in play. See what they tutor up. Bridge. Bridge is good. I'm going to try to high roll again. Didn't work last time. But... Finding copies of Tribal Flames are really good here. Yeah. Dome? I think that goes Dome. I think I whack Karn. Hope to kill Karn next turn. I, I just think this has to go here to make Ensnaring Bridge worse in the future. It's pretty hard for my opponent to not let these Shardless Agents attack next turn, which is why I'm kind of comfortable leaving the Karn in play. Ooh. Oh, come on, really? Wow. Famous last words, I guess. Oh. Well, that's cool. So my opponent doesn't know this is coming. And my opponent doesn't have the mana to cast a Chalice on 2 right now. Or I guess Chalice on 2 doesn't matter. I think I'm just playing a 5-5 five five and then eating... In, uh, in Staring Bridge with uh, Prismatic Ending next turn. I think it's okay to not play mana efficiently here. I can also just like draw another Leyline Binding at some point. There's a city. Yeah, they're just playing that to empty it out of their hand. There's a Karn Plus. That's all A-OK -okay with me. Prismatic Ending on Ensnaring Bridge. Let's go white, blue, Red. Done. I think I'm okay throwing away a creature just to 100% make sure the Karn is dead. The lethal attack, but my opponent can chump a Shardless Agent. I just want this Karn dead 100% of the time. And then I'll just kill next turn. Um, I am just going to go ahead and do the whole looting thing. I don't think I need Endurance. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, it's very much an over-attack on Karn, which I don't love, but now I've got 7 damage next turn. Ancient Tomb's not tappable. I have double Scion of Draco. Alright, cool. Um, this is this is what this shit is for. Let's bring in that side of the sideboard. Um, what's not good? I'm a little more unclear about that. Like, I know I want these 7 cards. Wild Nakoddle's bad versus Chalice, but otherwise is pretty reasonable. Minsk and Boo is direct damage for Snaring Bridge type situations. I think I'm going to get rid of Wild Nakoddle so that I have a higher chance to Cascade into Pithing Needle. I don't think I'm super keen on Endurance. And I'm kind of unsure on the last card or two here. Seems like it can be a Shardless Agent without that super disrupting my plans. <clears throat> I just cut a whole bunch of green cards, though, while bringing in Force of Vigor. Sure did. There is a Serum Powder. This is a reasonable enough set of cards that I'm comfortable keeping this hand. In a lot of worlds, I will just Prismatic Ending away whatever my opponent's turn one play is. Okay. Not this time, though. Avu. Um, so I have Red Red. I don't have Green Green. I need to not play Savannah this turn. I'll just go ahead and lead on a Plateau. Mox Diamond occurs. That may eat a Prismatic Ending, depending on what my opponent does with their turn. That is a Karn. Alright. I can kill Karn with Tribal Flames, which is nice. Best grabbing Lattice. Do I let him cast it? I have Tribal Flames for X is 
three, right? Because all of these match a color with this. I guess if my opponent pluses the Karn, it's just like this huge disaster for me. So let's maybe not do that. Go ahead and just junk the Karn now. Oh, also, Tribal Flames is a sorcery. I keep forgetting that. All right. Dark Depths as land drop for turn. That's something kind of scary that I might have to contend with. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I'm just going to play something akin to a 5-5. Five, five. I can play a Kavu this turn. And a Kavu next turn. Back for 5, then 10. If my opponent taps an Ancient Tomb, they die. Ooh. Is that a random basic land, or is there actually black mana for something? Do not know the answer to that question. Port on that is fine. Oh, that's awkward. I guess my opponent's artifacts aren't super good right now, and I can just hard cast this on my next upkeep as long as I play... as long as I fetch the green triome. That's probably fine. Go ahead and fetch. That gets black into play, so this is a 5-5. Five, five. Crash in with this. Fine with looting. I think I'll just loot away the taiga. All right, opponent goes to 11. Red, green, second Kavu, and I now have a new green card to pitch to Force of Vigor. I don't think I'm going to go after Mox Diamond here. Oh, that's uh, good enough. We just get the concession there. Um, that's a that's a four one, folks, and that's a four one with a deck that I think is pretty misbuilt. Um, that was a good run with a questionable deck, I think. Um, overall thoughts on the deck list. I think this deck is close to working. I think the the cards that are in it and the synergies that are in it are very much real, but there's too much of the curve at like three and four. Or 21 lands. I would want to run this as about a 23 land deck, I think. So that probably means you trim some number of like Teferis or Endurances, or maybe you give up on the Prismatic Ending so you don't cascade into them um, to play a few more lands in the main deck. But generally speaking, I, I like the synergies that are here, even though I have complaints about the deck list. And even though I had complaints about the deck list, like scoreboard, it worked out. Although some of those games were really grindy. Uh, it's now about 11 at night, so I think I'm going to call it here and go to bed. Folks, I hope you have a great day. Please consider leaving me a like on the way out. It helps out a lot. And uh, I hope you uh, make your own better version of Minsk and Zoo. See ya!